Hey guys, did you know that the studio at Gallery North offers a creative and exciting summer program? Yeah, we've been doing it for about six years now. It's a seven week program. It's very intimate, safe and clean and it's held at the studio at Gallery North. We cap at 25 students per week and each week is themed. We've got weeks like Dino Week and Spy Week and Star Wars Comic Book Week. And each week is taught by some of Long Island's best artists and illustrators. We have a really great time doing projects similar to the ones I've been sharing at Art Ventures at Home. So if you're interested in learning more about our summer program, which runs from July to August, visit our website, gallerynorth.org. Click the Art Ventures Summer Program tab and learn all about prices, themes, and weeks. We hope to see you there. Hi everybody, hi to all my creative friends out there, my makers, my creators, my artists, young and old. I'm Mrs. Grass and welcome to another episode of Art Ventures at Home, brought to you by the studio at Gallery North. I wanna remind you that's where I'm normally teaching these classes. I'm in the studio on our campus in the heart of Setauket and when we reopen we can't wait to do some creative things with you there. On the docket for today's lesson, I'm so excited about it, tissue box monsters. We're gonna get super creative with some old tissue boxes. Let's get started. All right, everybody, here is what you're gonna need for today's project. First, you're gonna need an old tissue box. I don't know if you guys remember, but a few weeks ago, I shared with you that the studio at Gallery North is an earth-friendly studio, which means we are thinking about Mother Nature for many of the projects we do and the programs we offer. And we save a lot of things that can be upcycled or recycled or reused, and tissue boxes are so great for projects. You could cut the front off and create a diorama in it. You can stick your foot inside of it and make a big giant monster foot or dino foot. Um, or you can get fancy and make it any kind of shoe that you want. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn a tissue box into a creature. And I'm thinking monsters today because I've got monsters on my brain. The Young Illustrators Challenge this year, the theme is monsters. And I'm gonna share a little bit of, about that um, with you later, but um, so monsters are on the brain right now. Uh, so once you have your box, then you need to get some paper. I know that you know, I have so much scrap paper. We love scrap paper in the studio. We save every little itty bitty thing, um, any old, uh, paintings or drawings that we've given up on um, or uh, cut pieces that we're not using. So you need scrap paper and you can uh, um, do this with regular white paper and color the paper in the colors that you want or you can use cardboard and make the parts of your creature and monster box out of cardboard. Um, the, one of the best kind of cardboards to use for stuff like that is like a cereal box or um, a mini muffin box, because if you don't have a tissue box, those are other options. You just need to be able to cut an opening in it that can become the monster's mouth, okay? So paper, tissue box, glue, you're gonna need glue today. Stick glue, liquid glue, hot glue, all of those will work. If you don't have any, no worries. You can get your tape out. Tape will do just as well, duct tape, packaging tape, regular tape, anything you got, okay? Um, and then for some details, maybe markers, um, you could take markers out or crayons out and then some fun stuff. If you have like a scrap craft bin of 
pipe cleaners or pom-poms or silk flowers or whatever this is uh, any kind of scrap stuff you have even if you have fabric today that'll work great too yeah totally um, you can even make the eyes out of like ping pong balls or oh my gosh egg cartons uh, that's that's a great thing to use for this project as well uh, egg cartons are so great for art making um, and once you have all those things you're ready to go all right before I start making my tissue box monster I think it's really important to talk about design something that a maker does way before they start making is come up with a plan and your sketchbooks uh, the ones we created for our very first episode of Art Ventures at Home, that is a perfect place to make a plan for a project like this. So I sketched out an idea for my tissue box monster today. Um, and it's just a little drawing of what I think he should look like. And I've labeled his parts and I have to decide what I'm gonna make those parts out of. You know, I have my supplies sitting in front of me like a, a supply buffet in front of me on the table um, and I know I want to use this stuff because it's awesome I love it um, I know that I have such great colorful pieces of paper that I'm probably gonna make his teeth and his nose and ears out of those um, and then I do want to wrap my tissue box so that I don't see the whole design if we look at this guy you can see the back of him I didn't wrap yet and that what I mean about wrapping is that I could glue paper to the back of him to cover up any parts of the box I don't like um, I really loved the design on the front of this tissue box it looked like hair to me and I thought that was so great for my box my monster so I left uh, the design on the front but I covered the sides so he can be a green monster okay um, so I know that I'm going to make a lot of my parts out of this paper. This is a thicker paper, sort of like cardstock or oak tag or craft paper. Uh, so this is perfect for like paper sculpting, like doing folding and having it stick up. If you have regular printer paper today or wrapping paper or something that's not as stiff, you can always use uh, double layers of paper to make it stronger or put sticks behind it. So um, this is where making a plan would cut come into play and be a benefit for you so that you have everything you need before you start your project. So I've got my plan. I've got my supplies. That means I could start making my tissue box monster. All right, guys, I have all my stuff set up. You know, I had someone ask me about this paper that I have down on the table and it made me think oh my goodness there's so much about the studio and what we do that maybe many of you don't really know about this paper we have down on the table right now that I'm working on as a placemat was created by our Drawbots and Drawbots are a signature project we do at the studio with kids and adults it's part of our steam programming and when we reopen, we hope that you join us for some of our STEAM Sunday classes. It's where we talk about art and how it connects to all of the other academic subjects, um, science, technology, engineering, and math. And um, Drawbots made this. Uh, I'll have to share them with you during our Q&A episode because I've gotten so many inquiries about particular supplies and projects and um, other questions so we're going to do a, a, a question and answer episode soon and if you have a question for me or the studio or anybody that works at gallery north uh, or about gallery north you can put it on this thread and we'll try to answer it during our q a episode so this was made by drawbots all right i have my tissue box ready the first thing i need to do is grab my scissors remember use a pair of scissors that are right for your hands you don't want to use scissors that are too big or too small 
and using scissors and practicing with them every day is going to make the muscles in your hand stronger and you're going to become a better artist and writer because of that. I have my scissors and the first thing I'm going to do is remove this plastic that's in the tissue box. So I'm just going to cut right around the edge and while I'm doing this I could think about making my monster's mouth even bigger if I want because essentially this opening is where the monster's mouth is going to go. So if I want my monster's mouth to be bigger, I could make it bigger. For this guy, his mouth is the exact size that the window was already. I didn't cut it any larger. So for this guy, maybe I'll cut it a little bit bigger to show you how to do that. All you do is stick your scissor in to the opening and then start chomping away at the parts you'd like to get rid of so that your monster's mouth is a little bit bigger. So if I get rid of that bit, he's gonna have a bigger mouth. And this could be great for a monster who has a crazy amount of teeth or is a silly monster and he's laughing maybe, or you want teeth and, and a tongue to come sticking out of the bottom layer. Um, so I have my mouth. Now it's time for me to uh, cover up the parts of the box I don't want to see, or maybe if I want a different color. So I could wrap this with wrapping paper, I could cover it with fabric, I could take scrap pieces of paper, which is what I'm going to do, and I think I'm going to make a maroon looking monster today. So I'm going to cover this monster with this colored paper. It's not the right size though yet. So I'm going to show you how you can um, cut the pieces to fit the box the way you need it to. If you take your paper and you put it down on your tabletop and then you take the part of the box that you want to cover up and put that down on top, you can grab a pencil or a pen and you can just trace the box shape. And see those lines? Now I can cut this just like this on these lines and I'll know that this is the right shape to cover this portion of my box. Okay, And then I can grab my glue, whatever kind of glue I'm using today, and I can stick it on so that it's there, stuck. So that's part of my, my uh, monster. I'm gonna cover the rest of this uh, and show you what it looks like when it's all done being covered. Okay, so I've covered the majority of my box and then I have the front here. If you remember, I used the design that was already on the tissue box for my last monster. So I didn't have to cover the front, but this one, I don't really think the colors match my design. So I want to uh, cover the front with this maroon colored paper. I could take a nice big piece like this and glue it down. 
I'm gonna I'm using hot glue today, so I'll show you that I just put the hot glue on on the edge of the mouth area, and then I put my paper over the top. Okay, I would do this the same way if I was using tape or liquid glue or stick glue. I would put the glue on the box and then put my paper on top. And then I can take my scissor, go around the opening so that I still have a mouth, right? Just like that. Okay, so I took a big piece for that. And then I could take this extra scrap piece and I can put it here and do the same thing. I can glue the paper down and then take my scissor and trim it where I need to trim it. I need to trim it here, all the way across, and here. But I also need to trim the rest of the mouth, right? You know, your monster could be tall too. Ba -ba 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 -ba, like a big open mouth, like he's singing. It could be like this. You don't have to hold it like this. You could hold it like this. See, the more I make and create, the more ideas I get. You know, it's that's what it means to be a maker. You're, you create something, you notice how it could change or how you can improve it. And ideas just keep flowing the more that you make. So that's a good idea. I think after this one, I'm going to make a monster that's this way. I love it. All right. So my monster is covered. Woo. All right. If you recall, I had some interesting accessories and parts to add to my monster. I had a nose that's going here, ears, some crazy arms, eyes that are kind of flowing up from the top, and then I wanted teeth all the way around the mouth. I'm going to show you teeth first. I want to find a color that I like for the teeth. It could be white teeth. Ooh, come on. That's, that's amazing. This green with this magenta color. Love it. I'm going to make my monster's teeth out of this. So all I did to make my monster teeth was... I cut a zigzag on my paper, but instead of cutting all the way up, I stopped a little before the edge of the paper and then went down and up and down and up and down and up and down. If this seems too tricky to do, draw it out first and then follow your drawn lines and cut that way. So maybe you want your teeth to be fatter. You can cut, you can draw it first and then you can cut on your line. And my trick for cutting something that's been drawn out is that when you're done cutting, flip it over so you don't see those drawn lines anymore. And then you can glue it in. <gasps> I love it so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to glue these teeth in. I'm putting a little bit of glue. If you were doing liquid or stick glue or tape, you would do it the same way. Little glue at the bottom and then stick it on the inside of the tissue box opening. So the teeth look like they're growing out of the mouth. Okay, so I have my teeth at the bottom and part of my design was having teeth at the top. Oh my gosh. You know, I l really love when things come to life like this. Um, it's something I do in a lot of my, my artwork that I create on my own. Um, I love when something starts to take on a little bit of character and personality. So the more I add to this monster, the more cheerful you're going to see me get because I think it's so hilarious when they get to look silly and goofy and look like they can talk and hang out with me. So mouth. Woo! It's ear time. Ears and nose actually I'm going to do now. Um, you know, when I was imagining his ears, I was imagining something pretty unique. 
So I think I'm going to make my ears out of this uh, scrap paper. This was a painting that uh, I had given up on, but I never want to throw artwork out. In fact, I have a friend, Mary Jo. She's an amazing. She's an artist and an educator, and she has something called the reinvent box. It's something that we keep in the studio as well. And if someone feels like they can't really move forward with a work of art, we'll stick it in the reinvent box so that someone could take it out and use it for something new or create something new out of it or reinvent it in some way. This is something that would have gone in the reinvent box. I am going to use it to make my ears today. I want to get the ear shape right, so I'm going to draw my ears out first. I'm not going to be like Matisse today. I'm not going to just cut. I'm going to draw these ears out the way I like them. And I'm going to do it on the back of my paper. On the front, it's all pretty with this color. So on the back, I'm going to sketch it out and then flip it over when I'm ready to glue after I've cut. So I'm going to make a really kind of elfy pointed ear like that. There's my two ears. And when I draw them on the back, it doesn't matter how my sketch looks because I'm going to cut it and then flip it over so I won't see my drawing anymore. It's my cutting trick for collage. Okay, so I'm going to cut this ear out and flip it. And I'm going to cut this ear out and flip that. Oh, I love them. They look great. Okay, so I need to glue them on to my monster. Oh, if I glue them down, he looks sort of sheepish and sad. If I glue them facing up, he looks a little more perky. Ooh, those could become eyes too. Your eyes could be on the other side of your monster. Or you can have eyes everywhere. I mean, a monster is something that's imaginary, so you can invent it however you want. This is going to be my ears, so I'm also going to put a little ear design on the inside of it, just like that, okay? And then I'm going to stick it on, and the way I'm going to stick this on is the way that you should stick anything on that you're putting around your monster, and that's folding a little bit of the edge backwards or forwards, it doesn't matter. See that, I have a little fold there. And then I could put the glue here to stick it on. So I'll show you, I'm gonna put the glue right on this fold, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick it on the side of my monster. You know, I noticed my hot glue is steaming today. It's, it's been on for a while my hot glue gun so it's very very hot if you're using a hot glue gun at home make sure that you're being very safe with it or you have an adult helping you out this is a low temperature glue gun uh, it still gets very hot this is the kind you would find in the craft store but the hottest part is this metal bit and the glue that comes out of it so be super duper careful when you're working with it there's his ears all right, next is a nose. I'm gonna do the nose the same way I did my ears. In fact, I'm gonna use this scrap piece. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna draw out the nose shape I want. And I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna flip it. Flip it, a stick it, a see you later, bye. Here's my flip it. Okay, and I'm gonna give big nostrils. Like, he's looking up and we can see the inside of his big monstery nose. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold the edge just a little bit, enough so that I can glue it down. There's my fold. I'm gonna stick my glue on it. And then I'm gonna put my nose right on the edge of my box. If something isn't sticking right away, don't get upset. Just hold it in place for a little bit. My rule usually for gluing is that if it's not sticking, I hold it for about 20 seconds, I count, 
you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And then when I let go, the glue is usually tacky enough and it's stuck. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, he looks so great. He looks like he's complaining, <laughs> like he's crying. His mouth's open, his nose is up in the air, his ears are out. He is angry. Maybe we can make him look a little more jolly with the other parts we add. All right, so I'm up to arms. And if you recall my design, I had like squiggly arms. And I was thinking about using this sort of leafy, wiry material I have. I make Mickey ears, and this is some of the supply I had left over from a Christmas pair. So I'm gonna use this for my arms. So I'm gonna cut two lengths that are the same size, and I can do that by cutting one piece and then holding up the other side with the piece I cut and then cutting it so that I know they're the same length. I would do that if I was using string or pipe cleaners or anything like that. So I have two arms now and I want them to go on the sides of him. And then I think I'm, since this is bendy sort of, I'm gonna curl it a little like this before I stick it on and I want to have sort of a claw on it, so I'm going to take a piece of paper and cut out a jagged little hand, and that I'm going to glue to the end of my squiggly shape, and that's going to go just like this. There's an arm, and I'm gonna stick this on the side of my monster. I think that would, would do good. And I'm gonna do that by putting a little glue on my box, sticking this down, and then taking another piece of this maroon paper and putting that on top so that everything gets held in place pretty well gonna go right over it like that okay there's one of his arms hey guys all right let me do the other arm So I have my ears, my hands, my nose, and I'm ready to do my eyes now. My eyes in my design, uh, my sketch, were sticking out the top. So I thought I'd use an accordion piece of paper and glue that to the top. So wh what I'm doing to, do, to make that, or to create that, is I'm cutting a strip of paper two of them the same size. So I have one, two. And then I'm going to take one at a time and fold it forward and backwards and forward and backwards and forward and backwards. I'm gonna repeat that all the way to the end of it so that when I open it, I get like a fan fold or a what we call an accordion fold. And this accordion fold can then, I can use the flat side of it and I can stick it down to the top of my box and I can stick an eye on that. So I'm gonna do that with this one too, back and forth. I sort of like pinch it back and forth one way and the other, one way and the other, all the way down to the end of the paper. See? And then I stick it on. Okay, so now I have two, just like that. And I can make my eyes. I'm gonna draw my eyes out on a piece of white paper and then I'm gonna take those 
two eyes and I'm going to cut them out. top of my accordion like that. Oop, don't fall. <laughs> you look great, buddy. There he is. There's one more thing I want to show you about this. I think I could kick this monster up just a notch by adding some visual texture. Visual texture is when an artist makes a drawing of something that looks like it feels like something, like feels fluffy or feels uh, slimy or feels rough. So I want my monster to look hairy. So I'm going to put all these lines uh, using a marker. I'm gonna use it all the way around just like this. And it's gonna help my monster look a little bit hairy, or a lot hairy. And I could do that all the way around because I've wrapped my box all the way around with paper. So my monster can be a nice and hairy monster all the way around. I could even go on the back with big hairs. It's a hairy guy. Okay, you know, there are some other things that you can do with this. You can go real wild and crazy and make um, legs. You could use your cardboard tubes and stick those to the bottom, and all of a sudden your monster can stand up. Go crazy. I can't wait to see the monsters you design with your tissue boxes. I hope that you guys had a really great time making tissue box monsters with me today or learning about how to create them. I can't wait to see what you make. Please share them with us. We'd love to see what you're creating at home so that we can give you a shout out on our next episode. You can share what you've made on this thread or on our other social media outlets. On Facebook, we're Gallery North. On Instagram, we're Gallery North LI. Don't forget to tag us. We want to know what you're making. Um, also, you can rewatch these episodes. You can do that on our YouTube channel, Gallery North. Um, and if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the more subscribers, the more fun we can have on YouTube, bringing you creative content. Uh, if you're feeling really good about giving today, Gallery North could really use your, use your help so that we can continue to pro provide these programs uh, virtually to you daily. Uh, you can do that on our website, gallerynorth.org slash donate, or you can find a donate tab under the Art Ventures at Home page on our website on gallerynorth.org. Until tomorrow, stay creative, you're going to feel really great if you create. I'm Mrs. Grass. Bye.